Hi everyone and welcome back to the third episode of IBK Dollar and Behind the Scenes. Today is our full game day. Do remember to keep your eyes and ears peeled for important information that will come in handy when doing the quiz for the huge giveaway that we are hosting. Today, we'll be starting off with an exclusive interview with the first ever Asian to be elected in the International Floorball Federation Central Board. Ms. Siriwat comes from a famous swatting family in Thailand and she will tell us more about her vision for Asian floorball as well as for global floorball in general. But first, a message from our partners. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Congratulations on becoming the first Asian delegate of the IFF Central Board. Can you tell us more about what that entails? First off, it is an honor for me to be the first Asian representative on the IFF Central Board. I hope that I can contribute to the development of floorball in both the Asian region as well as on the global level. My love for floorball began when Thailand hosted its first World Championships qualifiers here in Pattaya uh, six years ago. And ever since then, I've been very much involved in floorball. You are currently a consultant and researcher in conflict mediation and human rights, as well as the head of international affairs of the Professional Footballers Association of Thailand. Can you share with us more about how your jobs intertwine? Two years ago, I was able to merge my interests in sports as well as human rights as I helped co-founded the first sports union in Thailand. The Professional Footballers Association of Thailand was established to protect and educate professional football players of their rights and their rights in terms of their rights with playing as a career and also their rights within the club. And over the past two years, we've been helping many players understand their rights, as well as fighting on behalf of their rights in a collaboration with FIFPRO. Asian floorball has developed tremendously in the past five years. Finally, floorball will be a part of the Asian Indoor and Martial Arts Games in Bangkok 2021. This is a huge milestone for us. Please share with us how it came to be and what this means for the future of floorball. Yes, and for the first time in history, under the leadership of Dato Suri Chayapak Sirwat, the president of Asia Oceania Floorball Confederation, we were able to push floorball into the charter of the Olympic Council of Asia. 
What this means is that floorball wasn't listed as a demonstrational sport in Turkmenistan, yet it is now established in the charter. So whenever we have any future indoor martial arts games or any games in the Asian level, floorball is a likely candidate to be chosen as a competitive sport, which is great news for the development of floorball in the Asian region. What is your vision for floorball and what do you think we can do as a floorball community to work towards that goal? My vision for floorball is to see the sport being welcomed and played throughout the region as well as on the global level. But I do believe that it starts from the grassroots initiatives by firstly introducing floorball into school programs throughout the region, beginning with Thailand. I hope that we can take the example that, that's been greatly demonstrated by Singapore to establish this sport as a formal sport in the school curriculum. And afterwards, uh, we can see a growth of floorball throughout Asia and then on the global level. You have a long history of being involved in the management of Thailand's national sporting scene. How will this help you in your position as a member of the IFF board? I hope that I can use my past experiences in my involvement in different sports to contribute to the fruitful development of floorball in the Asian level as well as the global level. I hope also that as an Asian representative on the board, I can further strengthen and bridge the relations and communications between the Asian countries as well as European countries so that more communication and exchanges of assistance can be of help to help us see the sport that we all love become acknowledged in the global level. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Siriwat, for being here with us today for this interview and all the best in your future endeavors. Right now, we'll be streaming a full SSL game that Dolan played against Falun. This is a huge game for them as Falun is one of the stronger competitors in the league. Accompanied with the game will be unique interviews pre-game, during period breaks, as well as post-game from both the coaches as well as the players. I hope that you guys will enjoy this special segment that we have prepared for you. Klubbar var du lirade för? Ja, uh, aldrig hade jag till. Om vi tittar lite, Christian, på laguppställningarna. Det är många spelare borta i dalen. Ja, uh, och det, det är en del tunga namn. Ketil Kronberg har varit borta stor del av säsongen. Uh, Sonidsson kommer också att saknas. Och så har de ju Degeryd dessutom. Då. Även backen Per Forsman är väl de tunga namnen utifrån speltid sedan tidigare. Och det, ja, det blir tufft, tror jag. De, 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 de kommer saknas. Vi kan prata lite mer om en... Om det är om en stund, Falun's laguppställning. Den tickar in också. Här ser ni den, inte lika uppstrukturerad i formationen. Men nu kan ni få ut av mig om en liten stund. Och här, till skillnad mot Dalen, så tror jag alla är tillgängliga. Ja, det är fantastiskt i dessa tider får man säga. Så att, eh... Men sant att se hur de kommer få mer av laget. Vi har ju lite koll. Emil Lilja vaktar målet. Ja, de har ju alternerat mellan varandra, han och Ren. Och idag fick Lilja chansen, så det blir spännande att se. Och medan hemmalaget gör entré i arenan så tittar vi lite på de två spelare som ni har hört rösten på. Här är Kristoffer Andersson, vad finns det att säga om honom? Ja, men det är en rajtare som kom till Dalen från Höllviken i förra säsongen och gjorde 42 poäng i sin första säsong i Dalen. Det är ju imponerande. Han har redan mäktat med 6 min i år så att det är en riktig, en riktig sniper. Okej okay, Jonathan, today's away game against Fallon. What's your feeling? Yeah, it's uh, of course it's a tough game against the Swedish champions, but I think that I think that we have started to build something good this season, and uh, we're going to try to go in with our heads held high this game and keep on.
playing floorball our style. What's important? I think that you, it's important for us, even if we have a lot of guys missing and a lot of new guys coming into the team, I think it's important that we, we don't fool ourselves into doing different things. It's still important that we uh, keep on putting our forecheck, keep on working hard in our one against one situations and, and doing everything according to those routines what we have. I think that's the most important thing today. Yeah. Uh, how many injured players do you have today? Oh, uh, quite a lot of guys now, but it's uh, it, it would be good to see uh, all our three Czech players from start today, and uh, we are excited to have them with us also. So it's they will per perform good today. Okay. Press and play. Then here. After midday, it's a little bit of a back in the Dalen. Yeah. 3-0. Underläge 0-3 borta mot Falun är ju inte ett drömscenario. De hade ju lovat att gått högt och det tyckte de gjorde det. Vart kanske lite passiva i sin press och överspelade några gånger vilket gjorde att ah, tappa lite tron på det. Men nu har de inte så mycket att orda om. De behöver, ju, de behöver ju gå högt. Fortsätta med det om de ska komma in i matchen. Vi får hålla utkik på vad lagledningen har hittat på här. Om man har stuvat om någonting eller om man har... Gjort om taktiken. Vad skulle du ha gjort? Um, <laughs> nej, jag hade nog fortsatt att rumma på, på de formationer. Jag tycker inte att det är någon som har fallit ur ramen eller har spett så mycket. Jag tycker han checken Jakobino har varit lite intressant. Han har faktiskt varit fram oroat några gånger. Så kanske lite tid på honom. Men det blir viktigt powerplay nu. Uh, det kan ju faktiskt vara en, en biljett som en väg in i den här matchen att uh, börja med att sätta på powerplay. Just det. Det är numerärt överläge för Dalen. Ja, Jonathan, what are you saying about the first period? Uh, okay, so it's uh, been tough for us from time to time today. It's, um, I think the first 15-16 minutes are quite uh, quite bad from our side and we started to play a little bit better in the last minutes of the first period, but uh, if we're going to have a chance today, we're really going to have to step it up. I think that without the ball, we are not putting the forecheck all the way uh, as high as we want to and in our own half I think that we are a little bit too passive in the one against one we are not aggressive enough with the tackles and everything so I need the physical part of the game has to step up a lot if we if we're going to get the result today what do you say about Mons Porsche's saves <laughs> fantastic of course I think it's <clears throat> both when it's is 2 nil and 3 nil he has uh, some great saves and of course he <laughs> yeah we are still in the game, thanks to him also. Siang Hill and Club Street is a perfect place for after work dinner and drinks. Situated conveniently in Chinatown, this place is a buzzing enclave at night. The interconnected roads of An Siang Hill and Club Street have lots of places for a quick recharge, ranging from intimate restaurants with breathtaking views to indie retail shops and hidden bars. A gem near this place is Hawker Chan soya sauce chicken rice and noodle, located in Chinatown Complex Food Center. It was established in 2009 and was awarded one Michelin star in July 2016. Hawker Chan is now a global enterprise with 12 franchise restaurants in six countries. A fun fact is that 7 Temple Street, right next to Club Street, was a cradle for Singapore floorball and it was where all of Singapore and subsequently Southeast Asia floorball originated from. We hope that you have enjoyed this segment and see you guys at our next destination. Bye!
det här här blir en riktigt intressant avslutning på matchen känns det som. Ja, men det blir jättekul att följa till andra personer perioden här och se vad den tar vägen någonstans. Falun som var rätt överlägsa första. Kanske är överlägsen än vad 3-0 säger och kanske lite det Monsa också så då. Han höll ju inte riktigt med oss att eh, vi tyckte de faktiskt var värd 3-3 men eh, med skotten ändå i andra perioden 4-10 mm. och, och total, säger en del av matchbilden. Och totalt 12-16. Dalen har eh, vridit över skottstatistiken på sin sida. Men de eh, gjorde lite grejer i Dalen. Dels så satte de pressen bättre. Falun hade ingen recept på det. Tog inte ut pressen riktigt. Vilket gjorde att jag fick mer tid i anfallszon och tyckte jag spelade rakare på mål. Det var mycket skott, mycket lägga in på kassen och var där och liksom gnuggla. Uh, och det gav ju rejäl utdelning och två powerplay mål. Det var nice to see the second period. What do, you, what do you say about your team? Yeah, of course. Much nicer to see. I think the most important part for us was to step up our defense uh, a lot. And we have done it in the second period now. I think that we are putting the forecheck much better higher up in the field. And I think that our defenders are really doing a big job in our own half now, protecting Mons and, and winning also situations in our own zone. I wouldn't be surprised if we are keeping Fallen at really low, how do you say it, like um, goal scoring opportunities. I don't think they have created much in this period. And it's also good for us that we score two goals in the power play now. That's something we, we have talked a lot about that we need to improve, so uh, that's nice for us. What do you think is going to be important in the third period? I think it's to... Um, to be able to close and win this game, I think that we also need to play a little bit better with the ball. Uh, we are we are protecting the net much better, but we also have to create a little bit more chances in the five against five. So uh, I would like to see all five guys on the field wanting to help in the situations, not uh, not anyone hiding from uh, from the ball. Uh, so if we can step up the offensive game a little bit, I think we can win this one. Jag får se höjdpunkterna ytterligare. I den tredje perioden så var det ju kanske ganska jämnt egentligen spelmässigt och det kunde ha gått åt vilket håll som helst. Men Dalen hade den där dagen då, ja, ja då, det, då det gick. Det kan ju vara det mentala också att de har hämtat upp och Falun har tappat. Det är, det är inte ovanligt att det hänger ihop. Och som du säger, det, det kunde ha gått åt båda hållen i sista perioden. Falun har ju ett par bra chanser också innan Dalen. Och se, segermålet, det var ju en, eh, som vi pratade med Kristoffer Andersson om, eh, en riktig viljeprestation. Ja, och samtidigt bra Hedlund. Han håller inne i passningen där, låter bäcken sätta sig ner så att... Ja, Jonathan, det var en bra vinn idag. Ja, en bra vinn. Och en mer powerful goal också, eller det var rätt efter att penalty ändade. Men vad en goal av Brolle, det var nice för honom. And what a way to end the game. Two minutes left and beat Fallen away. That's uh, that's that's great. Something to build on, of course. Yeah. What do you say about the match? I think it's it's crazy how it can be so um, so up and down from time to time. So I think that we started the game really slow, but the second period is really strong from our side. And then to be able to ride out some box plays also in the third period and to keep our head cool when we get some. Uh, penalties against us, I think that's that's really strong from us. So as a, as a whole of a game, I think it's the most important thing for us today was that we sharpened the defense really much and that gave us a chance to win the game. Okay, congratulations. With that, we have come to the end of day three of IBK Dollar Behind the Scenes. Thank you so much for following us through this special journey and we hope to see you in this year's SG Floorball Open. Please do not forget that the live bus interviews with IBK Dolan superstars while on their journey to their away game will be happening on 9th January, 7pm Singapore time and 12pm Central European time. That is also when the winners for the giveaways will be announced. 
Thank you so much for tuning in and see you guys soon. Bye.